Do we pause foreign aid in order to pay for the cost of coronavirus? How many times have we been in this place? Do we scrap foreign aid? Do we reduce the foreign aid budget? Do we look at more, look more carefully about how we spend the foreign aid budget? The list goes on. Today we learn the government might be looking at offsetting the cost of coronavirus with a reduction in foreign aid. Downing Street said these reports were merely speculation. By the way, that translates on Civvy Street that they're quite happy that we are debating this and discussing it, and they'll see where the mood music takes them. So, foreign aid, here we go. 0.7% of GDP. That around, that's around about £15 billion a year. So, for every £100 the UK makes, we give 70 pence of that in foreign aid. Only five other countries hit the United Nations' suggested target of 0.7%. Top of the league around the world? For foreign aid, who do you think? Hands up at the back. It's Norway. Norway come up just over 7% they give away. They love giving stuff away. So the theory behind this, OK, is, as David Cameron said in that piece, it's, it's sensible. All right, I get this. The idea is that we have a moral duty to assist countries and people who are desperate, living on meagre wages, struggling to eat, struggling to live in something that even resembles a house. To, to want to help those people is completely reasonable. The UK has got an incredibly proud track record, of course, of helping others in this country. You look at the amount of charities that exist in the UK, look at the amount of TV commercials that exist for those charities, not just domestic charities, but charities around the world. That only happens because British people have a sense of generosity when it comes to those in need. We don't discriminate because they happen to live somewhere else, etc. We understand. But this, what we're dealing with at the moment, is something different. This is your government when it comes to foreign aid. Not your choice to donate money, your government donating tax pounds to be spent in other countries. Now, we're all aware of some of the crazy areas where this money has been spent over the years. The five million quid that went to the Ethiopian music industry, namely to help their version of the Spice Girls. I'm not making that up. That actually happened. We give over 70 million quid to China. Yes, Ch let that sink in. China, their GDP, by the way, in China is five times what it is in the UK. I think I'm right in saying we also give money to North Korea. Did you know that? North Korea. Yeah, him, Kim and co. We also have had unfathomable cases, of course, over the years. 72,000 given to a student in South Africa to study jazz. There was... <laughs> 100,000 quid given to a Brazilian education system for someone to examine the role of the Roman intellectual Cesaro. I mean, these kind of things. There have been industrial scale wastage. We know about that. It did get better, by the way. And there's now more checks and balances on what foreign aid does. But here is really the nub of the problem. We live under a kind of constant urban myth in this country. And it comes under the banner of that phrase, first world problems. The idea that any problem we might have in this country could never be as bad as what somebody might have in another country. Uh, this, of course, is nonsense and it has to stop. It's just inaccurate, mischievous. It's also incredibly dangerous. It's dangerous because it allows politicians in particular to run away with the idea that social issues encountered in the UK are never really quite as bad as what goes on elsewhere in the world. And this lets people off the hook. It allows the good and the great, our Westminster masters, to swerve responsibility by assuming that whatever issues we've got here, it couldn't be as bad as what they've got over there. Just because we don't have a famine or a military war going on right now doesn't mean there aren't people, of course, in dire need. It doesn't mean there are people, aren't people in this country that are homeless. It doesn't mean there aren't people in this country struggling to eat. It doesn't mean there aren't people in this country who don't speak to another human being from month to month. Look at it this way. If you break your arm, you get help. You don't have a medic come up to you and say, well, there's a bloke over there who's broken both of his arms, so you must be OK. That's just anti-intellectual mumbo jumbo. The same thing happens when it comes to the wider social problems in this country. Those wedded irredeemably to foreign aid are making that same argument. Well, we haven't got it quite as bad as over there, so nothing to see here. Well, today we do have a war. We have an economy that might collapse. We have the looming problem of mass unemployment. Today, we are one of those countries in need of help to the tune of £100 billion. Now, depending on who you listen to, it might even be slightly more than that. I'm talking about the coronavirus black hole. I don't want to get rid of foreign aid, 
but I do want to pause it. 0344 499 1000. Should we pause foreign aid to pay for the cost of the pandemic? Uh, that's the number where you'll find us, 0344 499 1000. I understand there's lots of kind of technical arguments as to why we give billions of pounds to other countries, 0.7% of GDP, nearly 15 billion quid a year. Theory being that if you help emerging economies at some point, once they become first world economies and they've got to hand out the big contracts, they come back to the UK and go, ah, you were the guys that helped us out years ago. I remember that. Yeah, here's a massive contract. Hooray. Everybody pops the champagne. Everyone's happy. It worked. That's one of the theories behind it. There's the kind of moral component uh, that I just alluded to, that if you look around the world, there are places that clearly have utter devastation. They need some help. I understand that as well. But what if you paused it rather than got rid of it? So you pause foreign aid, say, for three years. Well, there's 50 bill straight away, pretty much 50 billion quid, half of what the cost of coronavirus is going to cost us in one fell swoop sorted. I mean, can you imagine the taxes that won't have to go up if you did that? Can you imagine the services that can continue as they are if you did that? Can you imagine a situation where the government has some wiggle room if they did that? I can't quite fathom what's not. To, nobody is saying we don't want to give money to foreigners. No one's saying we don't want to help people out who are in a mess. What we're saying is we're also in a mess. It's a right royal mess. Our GDP has sunk by 20% in the last survey on this. That means things ain't what they used to be. It's not tickety-boo out there. Life's going to be a bit rough. Life's going to be difficult. There's going to be massive challenges for services, for individuals, for jobs, for the overarching economy. It's not going to be good for a few years. So why don't we? Where's the area where we know there is some money in the pot? The foreign aid budget, £15 billion a year. Would anybody, even the greatest advocate of the foreign aid budget, I'm thinking people like Damien Green, who with a straight face could say, yeah, that won't work? And if not, why not? 0344 499 1000. Foreign aid, of course, is something that, as David Cameron said in that clip, can we just hear that clip again, please, Amy? This is so former prime minister. Because well, every prime minister is being tackled on this, haven't they? Like, what about foreign aid? Let's dip into the, get rid of the foreign aid, reduce the foreign aid, focus the foreign aid. This is what Cameron said when he was leader of the Conservative Party. We made promises to the poorest people in the world, and it's a promise that we made and a promise that we should keep. Uh, and to those who are sceptical, I would say it is not only the moral obligation that better off countries have to tackle poverty in our world, where we still have over a billion people living on less than a dollar a day. And nobody wants to see that, but we also want to make sure that in order that we can continue as a functioning first world economy going forward, and the only way you can do that is by making sure your own economy and your own house is in order. You're in no fit state to look after someone else if you can't look after it yourself. That's just a fact. That's why they tell you on airlines that in the event of an emergency, make sure you're sorted first because then you can help someone else. Doing it the other way around has never worked. It doesn't work. The law of physics, the law of nature, the law of morality dictates that's the only way to do it. A rough old ride is coming our way. The winds are inclement. It's going to be challenging. People we know are already losing their jobs and we're told the smart money says we ain't seen nothing yet in terms of what might happen. Now, I've said this constantly. I'm an optimist. I think we'll turn the corner. I think it will be V-shaped. I think we can make it work. That doesn't mean that we still haven't got a stonking big invoice coming our way to the tune of £100 billion. Let's pause. Just pause. Pause the foreign aid budget for a couple of years, and that will give us at least some wiggle room. We can say, OK, we're not abandoning our responsibilities we are still ethically and morally understanding. We'll be back with you. We'll continue dipping our hand into the pot to help those most in need. But right now, we are in a slightly precarious position ourselves. So just allow us a moment and then we'll resume. Now, who in the name of every great charitable, benevolent organisation in history could say that that would be an unreasonable position to take. 0344 499 1000. Should we pause foreign aid to pay for the cost of this horrendous pandemic?